Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter Up Increase. My name is Nays Anise, for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video. And I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So this is a reading vlog, as you can tell from the title. Um, it's specifically for the book Hava by Tosca Lee. But I'm actually in a rush right now. So I have to ship out two packages today. It is 10.49 in the morning. Um, I did go to Walmart earlier today, which is why my mask is on, and I'm getting ready to head back out. My mom is actually waiting for me, <laughs> so I'm trying to, like, hurry up, but um, I have an international order to ship out. Um, I actually was posting that last weekend, but I went to, hold on. Okay, I have went to my son's father's house, and the post office over there closes dumb early. Um, I forgot where he lives. Everything's like closed earlier than where I live. So I had to wait and I didn't want to get on public transportation because I don't trust public transportation at this point in time with this pandemic. <laughs> no, especially since they have people going on through the back of the bus. We just not going to do it. So I wait till Saturdays to do my shipping because my mom can just drive me. Um, I'm sorry guys. I'm just taping the shipping information to here sorry if that's loud <laughs> I gotta do it one more time okay and I'm done with that so like I said I just have to ship off two packages I did have to go to Walmart earlier um, which is why my mask is on. We went to Walmart this morning. We got up at like 8 to go to Walmart. And I got some stuff. I'll haul that stuff when I get back. But, um, yeah. So, package one. Package two. And I'm ready. So, I'm actually going to go right now to the post office to get this mailed off. It's 10.51. They should, they should be open or already open, whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah. I'm going to go chip this off, come back, haul some stuff, and then tell you guys more about the book and then we'll get into the reading montages. Hey guys, so I'm back home. Um, it's 11.54. I did change my shirt because the halter top I was wearing was showing too much of my bra um, and I never want to get on camera like that. So I switched my shirt. You can still see my bra, whatever. Um, but I am back. So I'm just gonna share the things that I got from Walmart and Rite Aid and then um, tell you guys about the book I'm gonna be reading as well as the other books I'll be starting um, so yeah so first off Walmart I went to Walmart to pick up some packaging stuff because I needed stuff to package off so I got that small box that I showed you guys and this box don't remember how much they were but they were like less than three bucks um, I had got two things a bubble wrap I like to keep bubble wrap especially when I'm shipping out mugs I then got some coffee stuff so I bought some coffee stirrers I needed some more and then some more coffee filters because they're running low we like to just keep backups because my mom takes coffee to work um she takes about two and a half cups of coffee to work and a tumbler um and then i drink coffee here as well at home so we did that um i got this binder um it's a one and a half inch binder in lavender of course um it's from pen and gear and it holds up to 330 sheets but i got a binder specifically for the purpose of putting my sermons and sermonettes inside of them so um i do have like a few that i've already written up that i want to print out and put in here just to start cataloging that because i know this god is basically telling me that i need to be in a season of preparation um i know that before this pandemic happened i was invited to speak at other churches other ministries um and i've just started teaching at my church so i know that my leaders will probably start calling me soon to speak um and god is just telling me to prepare for that and i've been avoiding it because yeah so i'm going to be printing those out as i type them and sticking them in the binder so that's what this binder is it's going to be my sermon binder um and then i bought some stickers because why not so walmart as you guys know sells happy planner supplies um i love happy planner planners but i have not been using them in the past few years however i saw this seasonal sticker pack they had the seasonal one a teacher one and two student ones or it was a two teacher ones whatever they had three sets for like school related um, and then they had the seasonal one and I wanted it because I have one of their seasonal ones already that I do enjoy but this is like the updated one so um yeah you know they have 30 sheets of stickers and I like these stickers so much I love the colors on this because the other ones are very traditional for each holiday but like these are really pretty so 
I'm glad to have these, especially since we're going into fall um, soon. So we have some new stickers. Um, and then from Rite Aid, I got the sheet protectors to go inside the binder to stick in my um, sermonette. So we have that. And then, okay, so y'all got, you see my nails. My nails are pretty long. As you can see, they're they're long. But this one broke off. I'm not looking at the camera. I'm looking at Serena to make sure. But this one broke off. And I'm just, I'm over it at this point of my nails they keep chipping and breaking and I'm, I'm over it and as much as i love doing my nails i have tons of nail polishes i own over 100 polishes problems but um i'm just i'm over it and i don't feel like painting my nails because when i paint my nails i have to do the whole shebang and <clears throat> i just don't feel like it so because this one broke off i'm just gonna clip them all off which i know i'm gonna regret doing that <laughs> i know i'm gonna regret it but it's okay because they'll grow back but um you guys can see my nails this one was long too both of these were actually longer i had to cut this one because you guys can see it's curving and then this one just completely like snapped so my actual nails are long however i'm over it so i like long nails but i'm over my nails so i picked up these kiss ones they're the the fantasy ones so i got two of their gel fantasy high volumes um this one looks to be in the uh stiletto i'm pretty sure these are the stiletto but they're gray we do gray um and these you can do either the adhesive sticker or you can do glue i'm probably going to do glue or um use the um activator stuff to get it on there to at least last a month um and then these are the ballerinas which i love ballerinas but they're neutral we love nudes um and if i don't like the color i can always like paint over the the um nails and then i got these these are more ballerina um ballerina almost square style and they look like this so i'm gonna try these out um, i'm probably gonna go with the stiletto ones i never really did i think i've done stilettos maybe once or twice on my fingers um so i'm gonna go with these gray ones because gray goes with everything and i went for more neutral colored ones um my mom got some as well so we have that so that's what i'm gonna do um i did get a new laundry basket because the one i got is also mesh but because i used to have it out my son completely destroyed it and um it's all messed up with holes and um i'm just over it so new one um i also got two new pillows for my bed because i needed to get my son a new pillow and i personally just sleep on decorative pillows which i know is not really like a thing so i said you know what let me get new pillows now mind you i have four pillows on my bed behind my body pillow if you guys can see um but i just i don't I'm there for decoration purposes and to help support my back um i will be getting two boyfriend pillows and the boyfriend pillow is basically those pillows that are like you can sit up and they have like the armrest so i'm going to get two of those one for me one for my son eventually um because i i need it for my back my back i have i don't have back problems but i do get back pain um because when i was pregnant with my son and i was giving birth um the doctors did a lot of stupid stuff basically in short um, I knew from the start when I was pregnant that I wasn't going to have a regular vaginal birth. I knew that I was going to have a C-section. However, the doctors at the hospital didn't want to cut me open because I was too young and blah, blah, blah. I was only like 22, 22, 21, 22, 22, 21. Can't remember. I think 22. Um, but they didn't want to cut me open because I was young and blah, blah, blah. But I knew from the start that I wasn't going to be able to give vaginal birth because my canal was small. Sorry, this is TMI. Um, but uh, they wanted me to try. Um, I think I got to six centimeters and then I was just over it. I did try to deal with the pain. I was, I already knew that I wanted the epidural because I'm not a pain person, but I tried to endure the pain as long as I could. I think I handled it for maybe two, three hours. Um, and then I got the epidural. But the thing is, the guy that did my epidural the first time was flirting with my mom, <laughs> wasn't paying attention. So it was wrong. Um, Thank God he didn't like put it in wrong, but he didn't do the complete process right. He skipped a step. So my epidural kept like fading off on one side at a time. Like it'll work and then one side I could feel pain, the other side is completely numb. So someone had to come and redo it. He did it the right way, but because the first guy had already messed up, it kept flip-flopping with the sides that was staying numb and wasn't staying numb. So because of that, I have back problems. And when I was pregnant with my son, he was putting a lot of pressure on my back. So in short, I got back problems. So I need clothes to support. Sorry if you guys hear the drums. I can't do nothing about that. Um, my brother was in the closet. He used the closet for um, the purpose of... Hey guys, I'm back. So it's 2.12. Um, the last clip 
I forgot what time it was, but yeah, I don't have to explain what you guys saw the last clip, but I'm back. Um, and I'm actually waiting for my computer to do an update. I actually hooked up my computer to a big TV that we had an extra TV in the house. So I have it hooked up to a, a TV on my other desk right now to make it bigger for me working purposes. So yeah, but reading blog. So I haven't started any reading today and I have like four books to read today. Yeah, pray for me. Um, <laughs> I made everyone in my house, um, a fruit smoothie is literally just fruits, um, frozen fruits with water and some sugar. The one my mom and I have has strawberries, peaches, mangoes, and I think a little bit of pineapples, but it's mainly strawberry. Um, and then I made one for my siblings, which is mainly strawberries with a few cherries in it. So it's delicious. I just don't like all like the pulp and stuff from the fruits. But um, this video is focusing on Hava the story of eve by tasca lee and um this is a book that i've wanted to read for a long time now i read judas no iscariot by her um earlier this year and i loved that story so much um i think i gave it a 4 or 4.5 star rating it was great and i definitely wanted to get more into her biblical fiction i know she has romantic suspenses mysteries and stuff like that but i really wanted to dive into her biblical fiction so I'm excited. This is about Eve. Um, it does include Adam, of course, but I'm going to quickly read the back of this for you guys. So it says, a single decision has the power to unravel mankind. Created, not born. The world's first woman without flaw until one fateful choice. Now all humanity must pay for the mistake. From paradise to exile, from immortality to the death of Adam, experience the dawn of mankind through the eyes of Eve, the woman first known as Hava. And, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited. So I do have to read the chapter 12 today, which is 120 pages. So we're going to try to figure that out. But outside of reading this, I also have to read some other books. So those books will not be included in this vlog, of course. But I do want to share with you guys, like, I'm reading multiple books at a time. But this is a focus of the vlog. So outside of that, I have to read two more books from my August TBR bingo video that I did. So the first is actually The Unseen Devotional by um, Priscilla Shire. I just need to read day one. It's day one. Um, the plan is to read 31 days but we'll see um this is a children's um devotion a children's middle grade teen devotional based off of her prince warrior series which i do own um books two i think book two and the prequel i own i haven't read it fully yet but um it's literally like a children's devotional so i'm gonna read it because this was the only book i had that had deckled edges so yeah um i also need to start with stay with me by Mikey wade which was also on my bingo cbr so um yeah i this is a, a contemporary romance yeah contemporary romance i'm excited to get into this i need to get to page 128 which is chapters one through seven so i need to read seven chapters in here 12 in hava um i will be doing my nails i think while we are doing the live show for the fantasy i'm gonna go with these kiss ones the um stilettos and gray so we're gonna rock with these i don't know if i'm gonna use glue or gel polish i might try it with the glue first um but it says that it only lasts for seven days so we shall see we shall see i haven't even opened this yet i should do that right How do you even like what even is what even is um yeah i'm probably not gonna use this nail glue i have actual kiss nail glue hopefully these nails fit my finger but um yeah i'm gonna clip my nails and put on these uh stilettos which I'm excited to be wearing these, but also nervous at the same time. So they have it where you can do the little glue dots, but I ain't got time for that. So we we not gonna do that. Those are way too big. Um, they're like that length, but like I said, I'm gonna cut my actual nails. So let's do one last view of my nails, guys. So here's what my actual nails. They're long. They're pretty healthy now. Um, compared to how they used to be however this one broke last night so i think it's just safe to say i need to just get them off so um i'm probably gonna regret cutting my nails i have this thing thing with me keeping my nails long but you know what 
we're gonna go for it. I'm really about to do this. Ah, that hurts my heart. It hurts my heart, you guys, to do this to myself. But, um, I'm over it. I'm over having to do my nails. I'm over having them break. So, I'm just going to chop them off. This literally hurts my heart. Because I'm, I'm very particular about my nails and my hair. Like, I like my hair long. I like my nails long. It's just always been something that I liked. But, she just does not have the patience for it anymore. And so, <sighs> I'm cutting my nails. <laughs> I'm really doing this. So, yeah, I'm going to cut my nails and wait for my computer to finish um, its update. And then I'll come back when I get ready to so yeah hey guys so it's about 5 10 ish 5 12 um just finished up that live discussion video book club talk chat thing whatever you want to call it um on youtube which was super super fun so i had a blast just discussing the book with other um book book lovers basically and booktubers but um i'm finally 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 going to sit down to read now uh i decided that instead of making videos today uh outside of this vlog of course that i i just don't want to make videos today um the reason being is today is Saturday. Um, I do my Sabbath on Saturdays and I'm going to do a whole discussion on the Sabbath because I know when I say that I do my Sabbath on a, a particular day, some people get confused or want to have arguments or disagreements with me. And um, I believe that the Sabbath was made for me and I wasn't created for the Sabbath. So um, the Sabbath is literally a day of rest, meaning that I do no work. I don't do any church administration work. I don't do any church social media. I don't do any uh, DOI work. No, no work. It's literally a day where I get to enjoy the things that I love. Reading, playing my games, just as, as most people would say is being lazy. It's pretty much what I do. Now, sometimes I will make videos because I don't consider making videos work unless it's like a video I have to like make sure I have complete content for, if that makes sense. But like vlogs like this, I don't consider work it's just me blocking my day so that's why i'm blocking um but yeah i'm gonna have a whole discussion on that because i know a lot of people get a little peeved i guess in a sense but sabbath is gonna be a whole nother discussion video with scriptures and all that however um i'm finally diving in and as much as i really wanted to make the other videos i already made about four or five videos this week starting from thursday so thursday friday those two days i made about four or five can't really remember um, for this channel as well as my book channel I do have to start creating content for DOG which was supposed to be today but I'm just I'm not in the mood to do that today is just a chill day so we're going to commence the reading so again how about the story of Eve by Tosca Lee this is biblical fiction based on the story of Adam and Eve um and yeah I'm excited to dive into this book so I'm going to be reading to page <laughs> 120 yeah page 120 so that's 12 chapters so what i'm going to do is read the first two chapters i'm going to annotate and i'm going to allow the first two chapters really to help me get into her writing again and um things like that because as much as i enjoyed judas i believe the iscariot story this one i believe came out first this was released in 2008 so a couple years ago so i'm definitely going to give it two chapters to really get into come back with my thoughts and then after i give my thoughts of chapters one and two i will then do a montage of me reading so let's commence the reading and i'll come back to you guys shortly okay guys so i read 33 pages 33 34 pages um so the prologue chapter one and chapter two um i will say i am loving the writing the writing on this is phenomenal and impeccable i love her descriptions i like how i feel like i'm there because of how descriptive she's uh tosca writes however i do find that the descriptions can be over the top at times so for me i like descriptions but i don't like descriptions to the point where i'm like literally thinking about every minuscule detail and i feel like she has a good balance but it almost leans to over the top for me but i'm loving it hopefully that makes sense um writing impeccable phenomenal i'm loving it um, so right now we are introduced to obviously Eve and Adam. Um, Eve had just woken up after hearing God say wake and um, she sees Adam and they're off into the garden. She's learning about the animals, the sky and all that great stuff. Um, there, There is a scene where they do go to that tree of good and evil where um, Adam is telling her 
not to eat from this tree it'll lead to death and blah 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 then they come across the they kind of see the serpent um but they don't have an interaction so i don't even know where to begin with this because for me i definitely am enjoying this i definitely can see this being a four stars depending on how it continues to go probably even a five um i'm calling it now however for some people this might not be your cup of tea and i'm going to explain why so one it can be over the top for some people with the description she is very descriptive which i personally enjoy because it brings me into the garden it brings me into the story and um the surroundings of everything however some people might find that over the top this first one um second thing is this talks about sex i'm just gonna say it. there is sex included in this story if you do not like sex in your books don't read it um now it's not over the top okay with like telling you what he's doing she's doing blah 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 but there is talk about sex um i'm trying to find the page and i'm going to read it to you guys um for me it doesn't bother me but for some it might so that's why i'm going to read it so you can be the judge of whether you would read this or not again this is biblical fiction on the story of eve and adam okay so um this is on page 26 she says uh, i drew his arms around me like a mantle pushed his hands along my torso i tasted the salt of his neck his groan was so raw that i thought he might fall to his knees i thought i give pleasure and then such pleasure will i give him um then you fast forward a little bit more it goes uh they were crossing the river um well no before that he says not here the roughness of his voice was adrenaline and seduction um so he pulled her toward the river and uh when they cross the river they fall down and basically he bent he bent to my neck my breast my navel i languished in pleasure and there there's like a whole i don't know if it's internal dialogue i feel like they're having internal dialogue mentally with each other um literally about satisfying each other um then she says i give myself up to him and then there's a part where it says we did not sleep until dawn now um again this is not like completely immersive with the sex scene it's not like over the top but i'm just stating that because i know some people may have a problem with reading sex in biblical fiction or christian fiction in general i do not have a problem with it i love the way tosca has woven that in there because god created sex sex was created by god it is a pure and holy thing when it's used correctly in a state of marriage um or in this case when two become one um so i i love the way she's writing this her writing is very lyrical for me very poetic um thoroughly enjoying it i am listening to the audiobook and i find that the audiobook has changed up some of the wording so i'm not sure if they did like a re-release of the book because this is a 2008 copy um but the audiobook either skips over some words it'll take one word and use a different like synonymous word or it'll add words so i'm not sure how that went but i am listening to the audiobook i took the audiobook out through hoopla through my library so um i am listening to the audiobook i am loving that we are getting black girl power in this book okay hava eve she black okay she is black and i'm loving it um i mean it doesn't say she's black but there's a part let me flip to it okay here it's on page 15 um she talks about adam and how there's a shadow that runs along his jaw like obsidian dust clinging to the curb of it and then they talk about eve where it says my brown legs upon it um literally she talks about her brown legs so i was like black girl power literally that's what i put black girl power um i will say there are words in here that i do not know um i've heard of but i don't know so i find that i'm literally having to circle and define these words um which doesn't bother me at all i like learning new words uh but yeah so far 33 pages i'm enjoying it a lot so i'm going to continue reading to about chapter 10 and then when i get to chapter 10 i will then come back with my thoughts again okay guys i'm coming back because i'm actually at the next part which is called the fruit so um the first portion was basically the prologue and all about the garden and basically in the garden we're seeing eve um begin to understand who she is what she is um beginning to understand who adam is in relation to her the relationship about the animals the world and everything about that and being able to um, commune with god um one thing i will say is that her and 
Adam can speak to each other, like verbally speak, but they also can telepathically speak, in a sense. Um, so that's something. Uh, one thing I did like is that Tosca is really focusing on the serpent and how he really just sits and watches you and he begins to learn you and your desires. Um, you definitely can see the serpent is really honing in on her um, and all that she is and what she wants and things like that. He's not messing with Adam, but he's definitely like slithering around, taking his, taking a pause, staring at her, looking at her, observing and really studying her. Um, and it says it quite often in the book that he's like looking, he's staring, he's studying her. So I like that she has that as a setup. Um, so now we're getting into the part with the fruit. Of course, we know about the forbidden fruit and things like that. So we are coming to that portion so i'm going to read that section and then come back to you guys hey guys so i am now at chapter um 11 i stopped at the end of chapter 10 because that was the end of the section on the fruit and um i am loving the writing of this book the writing is really pulling me in um it's very poetic and lyrical i am loving the way she is taking these biblical aspects from the bible but she's crafting a possible scenario of what could have happened and it's helping me to um see things because at the end of them eating the fruit you get to see the wrath of god and um not destroying the garden but you can see what eve's and adam's um decision to eat the forbidden fruit now does and it causes harm not just to them but to the garden itself to the to the animals and it's it's very mind-boggling like this book is written so beautifully well um i have my tabs already in you guys can see i got tabs lots of green tabs because certain things are like calling and pulling to me like the things i want to remember like there was a part uh the part basically when adam was like well it was the woman that you gave me that gave me the fruit and then you have eve who then points at the serpent there is a part where um this is in between when god is basically giving each of them their their punishments or consequences i guess when um he talks to the serpent and then he talks to eve and then he talks to adam um and Tosca wrote how deftly the human finger pointed at me meaning Eve was returned to its owner so basically the finger that Adam was so quick to point at Eve was basically turned back on him because God gave him the command to not eat the fruit and then he delivered that message to Eve he had that personal conversation with God and he knew right from wrong more so than Eve even though Eve kind of knew from Adam Adam knew from the source so I thought that was interesting it's like when we point the finger at people are we sure of our pointing of like how can i say it it's oh I, I can't say it the way i want to say it but um when you point the finger at someone god will basically point that finger back at you because you're more responsible than the person that calls that if that makes sense hopefully that makes sense i don't know um talking about the fruit when she ate it she said i had willed the thoughts of the one aside the moment i lifted that fruit from the tree we could not put right all that had gone awry without him. So basically, when you're getting ready to sin, or when you are in the act of sinning, you literally push every thought of God aside. And I know for me, that's pretty much how I felt in certain circumstances when I knowingly sinned. Um, like when I knew that I wasn't supposed to do something, but I wanted to do it anyway and did it anyway. It was like, well, I know what God said, but at the same time, I don't care. So I'm going to push what he wants to the side and i'm gonna indulge in this for the time being because it looks or it feels good and then you try to fix your problem by yourself but you can't fix what you wrong without god because only god can write that wrong if that makes sense so it's, this is speaking to me okay this book is speaking to me let me see what else got what else can i share nah oh the part when after they ate the fruit um they began to feel very different like that scene of how she wrote them eating the fruit and interacting with each other was insane. Like, honestly, it was, like, mind-boggling to me the way she wrote. I'm, I'm telling you guys right now, this might be a solid five-star. I'm calling it now, and I'm only 10 chapters in. Solid five-star. Um, there's just so much I can unpack, but I'm, I'm going to wait. But I will say this. Um, on page 66... Um, this is when Eve is trying to convince 
Adam that it's okay to eat the fruit because the serpent has told Eve that he ate the fruit and didn't die, which he physically didn't die, but spiritually he was dead. But of course they didn't understand this. So um, this is what she wrote, Tosca. She put, the fruit seemed inordin inordinately heavy, a growing weight nearly unbearable, and I knew I must lift it up to my lips and eat or drop it to the ground forever. And I put just like sin. Because with sin, we know it's a growing weight. And I'm going to use sex as an example because sex is like the biggest thing in our society that um, we can see. that We know it's a sin, but we still indulge in it. So with sex, we we see it as something enjoyable and pleasurable. But um, we also know that if we partake in sex outside of marriage, we're going to hurt ourselves. So now it's just like, well, do I just go and have sex or do I walk away type of thing? And I thought that was interesting. There was another scene. I got to find it. I'm sorry. Like this book is, it was good. It was good. Um, mm, mm, mm -hmm. I'm trying to like actually find the actual scene that it happened. Mm, nope. I'm literally trying to find that scene. I don't think I marked it though. But basically it was after they ate the fruit um, and they were like, they were par partially angry with each other, but um, they were also feral as far as like sex goes. And they basically had some rough sex. Um, but what happened was it says, Eve basically was thinking to herself, we had used each other cheaply. I felt a hot wash of shame, even as I felt an absurd flicker of desire. Basically, they took what God created, sex between man and uh, a man and woman, husband and wife, um, and they kind of perverted it because of the act of sinning and now having this knowledge of good and evil. So now they understand that they're naked. They're now, you know, engaging in sex. Even though they're married, their use of the sex was now no longer a holy thing because it was used in anger and in, in, in this feeling of guilt and shame. And sex is not something you should be ashamed of, especially when you're married. It's to be a loving thing, a pure thing, a holy thing. It's, it's beautiful. Um, God created it. But even in the context of marriage is like when you're having sex with your partner your husband your spouse your wife um what are your intentions behind the sex is it for the purpose of celebrating god or is it just for the purpose of you feeling the pleasure or you uh putting your dominance over that person and i, I just listen th this is <laughs> toscally you probably not you probably won't even see this video I'm gonna have to post it up on Instagram, but the writing in this is lyrical. It is beautiful. I am enjoying the story. I am listening to the audiobook, which I realize again, like I said, the audiobook is almost an abridged version of this because it skips some paragraphs. So I have to like put the audiobook. I'm putting the audiobook on two times speed and I'm reading it along, but when it skips over certain things, I will pause the audiobook and go back over to read those parts. Um, but it is so beautifully written i am thoroughly enjoying this and again i'm only i'm 102 pages in so like i said i normally give books 100 pages um i'm sold on this and i still have to do chapters 11 and 12 so i am now going to have a montage of me reading and i'm just gonna let you guys know like after this montage we're gonna jump into day two but this for me feels like it could pop we'll see after tomorrow but um i feel like this could be a five star read for me i really do um right now it's definitely at a four i'm loving the uh i don't want to say world building but it's kind of like you're there in the garden with them you're there when they're interacting with these animals you're there when they are um interacting with the serpent it is just mind blowing like and we all know that, you know, eating the forbidden fruit affected mankind. But now you also, in the way she wrote this story, you can also see the effect that it had, not just on mankind, but on the animals that they were supposed to care for, um, on the land that they were supposed to care for. Like, things started to decay. The animals started dying and turning feral. Like, the things that you do impact the world in some shape or form, whether it's another human, whether it's an animal, whether it's nature, it, it impacts. And I'm just... If I thought Iscariot was bomb, <sighs> and this book is a total of 354 pages, 
354 pages here is bonus content um at the back with a reader's guide authors note i'm like look at the reader's guide hmm i might but yeah let's let's commence the montage shall we Okay guys, so I got to page 120. Um, you guys can see the tabs. <sighs> I love this book. I'm gonna just leave it at that. Um, beautifully written, very I'm gonna just keep saying it's lyrical because of the way she, her, she wrote this. It 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 forces you to literally like visually picture it in your brain so that you're there. Um, I think it's funny now that they are going, Adam and Eve are like having marital issues because before they didn't have these things where they felt distant or ignored each other or had to work day and night. Um, so I think it's funny, like there's a couple of things like it's sad that they're going through it, but being a human living in society, I know how it feels. Um, <laughs> like she, <laughs> she was upset because he was snoring. She said, I lay in torment, dying to death and he lay snoring on his side. I would die without the sound of Adam snoring in my ear. I'm just like, girl, you mad because he's snoring in your ear, but you basically killed the both of y'all. Like, I mean, Adam did it to himself, but you kind of egged him on. So, right. Um, and then there is, she's complaining because um, she's talking about how he doesn't listen. She said, he was frequently alone in his thoughts, speaking only when I questioned him directly. Even then, he did not hear me sometimes. So I had to repeat my questions a second or third time. By then, my tone was so was as abrasive as the coarse hair of the boar how he annoyed me <laughs> i'm just like sis that's pretty much how we feel in life today so um what was the other one that made me laugh oh they were just joking around but um it's it's really interesting to see the story of adam and eve come to life um definitely scripture is involved but you have to take this with a grain of salt it is biblical fiction so there's not much told about adam and eve the bible so you have tasca creating this fantastic world um this fantastic story of adam and eve focusing mainly from eve's point of view and um i am thoroughly thoroughly enjoying this book thoroughly so right now it's sitting at a four star for me 120 pages in it's a four star i'm hoping this is a five star i have high hopes that it'll be a five star but i'm gonna save judgment until tomorrow but um this is phenomenal so now that i'm done with this i'm actually going to get into my book club book because i actually like discussing it right now in the group um so i do have the audiobook for it and i've heard people are enjoying it so i'm getting ready to pick up scythe um by no schusterman and then before i go to bed i will dive into stay with me by becky wade um and i don't i can't find an audiobook from this um i'm pretty sure i could probably find it on amazon so i'm gonna check audible to see if i can find it if i can't find it on audible then I just gotta read it myself um but again I kind of like the fact of having an audiobook play while I read because it pushes me to continue on in the story and puts me into the atmosphere um but this is contemporary so it might not be too difficult to read but yeah so now I gotta dive into these two books I still need to read Unseen um the devotional but I'll do that sometime before I go to sleep but that is it for day one and I'll see you guys for day two morning guys um it's day two of the reading vlog what time is it i have my glasses on it's currently 10 33 um i did get up at like 9 45 ish but um i got myself together because we have sunday school today but sunday school is switching from facebook to zoom so i had to make myself look presentable i have an hour before sunday school so i'm going to spend that hour um reading i have my books here um, I did not do <laughs> this, so I will be catching up on days one and two today. I also need to work on my planner as well. 
Um, all of my planners, actually. But just call me my y'all got it. It's raining. It's definitely raining. Okay. Didn't know it was gonna rain today. Yes, I But um Yeah. Um Face wash, deep brush, all that great stuff, fixing my hair. I'm just gonna keep my hair like this. I don't even care, honestly. But I'm wearing my Faith Over Fear shirt. Faith Over Fear, it's in rose gold and on the shoulder or the arm it says DOI. But um, I'm wearing that shirt today. If you are interested in this shirt, you can just click the link down below and go to the blog. Um, so yeah. Mm. I also have my new mug, which I'll show you guys later on in the video. Um, I'm gonna go wash it off quickly. Put my glasses on first, so. I need my glasses. Oh! I can see the world. Um, but yeah. I ended up getting the audiobook for Stay With Me by Becky Wade from, um, Audible. Um, I signed up for a new Audible account <laughs> so that I can have, like, the free month. But I literally have been switching, like, my audiobooks nonstop <laughs> because they have the exchange program. Probably shouldn't do that, but whatever. Um, so I'm listening to Becky Reed right now. And um, let me give you guys my thoughts. So you already know my thoughts on Hapa. Okay. Um, I'm reading this. This is a YA sci-fi dystopian. Um, it's pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to talk too much about that because it's not Christian related. But um, Becky Reed. So basically this follows... Genevieve Woodward yeah Genevieve Woodward who is a bible study author um and teacher something like that she teaches and she does um writes bible studies um and then there's a guy named Sam Turner who he is very much introverted to himself um they both are dealing with certain things so Genevieve right now has an addiction I'm not gonna say what she's addicted to but she has an addiction that Sam finds out because there's a situation that happens <laughs> which is stupid but whatever um there's a situation that happens and he finds out she's addicted to pills i'm not gonna say which pills but she's addicted to pills and um she's been trying to hide it and she feels like as a bible study author and teacher and, and like a preacher she doesn't want um people to find out that she is battling with something because then she feels like she's letting people down she is also one of the five kids that survived um an earthquake and where was it el salvador yeah in el salvador during her junior high school senior mission trip um there was an earthquake where thousands of people thousands of people had died and um of her friends only her and four others survived um which included her sister and then three guys um and one of the guys younger brother had died so um there's a lot with this story but i'm enjoying the banter between um Genevieve and Sam they're very comical Sam is dealing with his own situations with his past because someone he knew and someone he loved had dealt with an addiction problem so um it's very interesting to see the dynamics between the two because Genevieve is very much outgoing and Sam is very much like sticks to my routine don't want to come out of this routine he needs to follow his routine to a T but um it's cute so far i see the romance brewing you can see them falling for each other but they don't want to fall for each other so we'll see i'm going to be reading this today to chapter let's see chapter 16 so i have to read chapters 8 to 16 today um so that is the page 266 so that's the plan for today um and then hava i'm actually gonna start this in a few minutes um so i have to read to page 248 today which is um chapters 13 to 22 so i'm super excited to pick this back up because i'm thoroughly thoroughly enjoying this book like so much so much so like i said the plan is to finish this tomorrow and then immediately start the legend of shiva immediately but i might wait a day to start that but we'll see but um that's the plan that that, that is the plan for today so i am going to uh what time is it Ten thirty-three. 1039 right now. So, I am 
it's too tired <laughs> but we're gonna get this day going so i'm gonna come back to you guys with a montage possibly um but yeah i'll be back hey guys so day two isn't going as smooth as i thought it was um like at all it is currently 2 28 um my bishop is actually still on for its service but for some reason my uh stream just keeps pausing like i i'll hear him say a few words and then it'll pause for a long like a long time like right now he's just frozen um and it's fine on my mother's computer like her phone and her computer is fine i can definitely do it on my phone but i prefer it on my computer um so i i'm just i'm over it so i'm going to start reading my son is actually on his way home soon so i'm gonna dive into how i'm going to read chapters 13 to 17 because um chapter 18 is actually a new portion so like chapter 18 is literally like a new section so i'm gonna read 13 to 17 and come back with my thoughts and then um i'll have a montage of me reading and then I'll probably have a clip of my overall thoughts of today's reading and then we'll get into day three. I did go make a hot drink because I'm feeling all types of emotions right now. All types. Um, but it is in my new DOI mug. So um, I like these clear mugs. They're just amazing to me. I like clear mugs in general. Um, but yeah, I have the Daughter Up Increase and Lavender this time. Um, I did not have that initially. I only had pink, red, black, white, blue, and yellow um and someone had requested for lavender and i said that i didn't have it in stock but i definitely could make that for them so i did get the lavender and of course i had to make myself a lavender one because lavender is like the main doi color so yeah um we have that this is the hill brothers white chocolate caramel cappuccino with of course my favorite creamer cold stone sweet cream creamer from international delights um so it's four tablespoons of that it's supposed to technically do three, I did four for extra creaminess. Um, then I added in um, some of that creamer and then I did two tablespoons of sugar. And it's perfect. So I'm going to commence my reading and um, try to at least get this book done today because I want to be finished with it tomorrow so that I can start The Legend of Sheba on Tuesday. So I'll come back with my thoughts after I read chapters 13 to 17. Hey guys, so I'm finally now at the section called Cayenne, and um, basically chapters 13 to 17 is basically um, them coming to the place that they're going to completely settle at. Um, they did come across Levia, or Levia, I think is her name, which was the lioness that they basically um, raised and groomed back when they were in the garden. Um, there was a lot of animals dying and things like that, basically still dealing with the repercussions of their actions from the garden. Um, and witnessing the animals dying and killing one another. Um, so then we have her first birth with Cayenne, or who I'm assuming is supposed to be Cain, but in the book they call him Cayenne. And then her second son is Abel, but in the book she calls him Hevel. I think that's how you say it. Hevel, Hevel. Um, and then her third child in the book is a, a girl named Lila. Now in scripture we know that they definitely had three sons, and I believe they had two other sons and two daughters. I'm not 100% sure about that. I've researched it. And apparently they did have a total of five sons and, a, and two daughters. I'm not 100% sure. Um, look in the book of Genesis. I believe chapter five might give you more information on that. But um, yeah, so you have Cain, who was Cain, and Abel, who was Hevel, um, and their daughter. Oh, actually, no. They, they All right. So chapter 18, literally, I popped in and it says that they, they have two more kids. I know that their last child was Seth, if I'm not mistaken. Their last baby was Seth, um, which was the son that in a sense replaced Abel. If you guys know the story of Cain and Abel and Seth, then you know what I'm talking about. But um, it's interesting um, seeing her go through her pregnancies, her three pregnancies. Um, you really only get to see the first pregnancy with Cayenne and um, her experience, the, the different side effects, I guess, or symptoms with the swelling of her boobs and um, the back pains and the aches and the having to use a bathroom all the time. Like she complains about it, but it's so like realistic because this is something that we go through as women. Um, so I, I love the way that Tosca is really like going in depth with these things. Now, I am finding certain things funny because there are scenes where she will yell and get angry with um, Adam because he's not explaining things and I guess Adam is still in the mindset of they knew what each other were thinking back in the garden but now that they're exiled they don't have that sort of telepathic connection in a sense um, you now have to use words and Adam be like well I didn't know I don't know and like it's just like she'll start where is that where is that 
um so basically she, he, they were going back and forth um basically and adam is always out obviously working coming back she's by herself um she's tending to the animals she's doing housework she's also pregnant so um she said what is this that you say about not being apart how is this not keeping apart and they're not used to being separated they're used to being together because they really didn't have to do much they could will something to happen in the garden but now that they are now exiled they have to actually work um so there's a line that literally says his blank expression instantly maddened me i come back at night so her thing is you're always gone you're always out you're always working we're separated we're not together his thing is well i come back at night <laughs> as a woman you know how that feels so i'm laughing because it's like this is legit how things happen in life um there is i don't think i marked it oh there is another one that uh cracked me up as well i don't think i did mark it though oh that's because i'm not in the right section <laughs> um <laughs> so this is back in chapter 13 uh she's <laughs> so they basically get into a mini argument he says she says what will you do with that he says it's for the goats so she says goats he goes hey guys my son and my fiance had came in so <laughs> yeah but um as i was saying can i find that part uh there was a part where they were arguing because they were talking about goats yeah um and he, she was basically saying like okay what goats she didn't know what he was talking about he's like the goats on a hill that i saw yesterday and she's like okay what goats mind you he's they used to have that telepathic uh communication where they knew where each other was what each other saw and things like that so um he says that i saw on the hill yesterday so she says you say it as though i should know what you're talking about how should i know that you saw goats on a hill so what cracked me up was the next line where it says finally he said i don't know in that moment i thought he looked as dumb as an ass i'm only cursing because that's actually like written in the book it, it literally says ass um but obviously we know that means a donkey so um again when you're going into this understand that it's talking about biblical times and it is fiction <laughs> Um, but I'm really enjoying it. I've, I enjoyed um, seeing her go through the motions of pregnancy um, and comparing her first pregnancy to her second pregnancy. Um, she did have dreams of the serpent, um, which I thought was interesting because it's kind of foreshadowing to the things that's going to happen with Cain or Cain and in this instance of um, killing Abel or Hevel in the story. Um, and then there's also talk of like the first sacrifice with the animals that was like blemished and perfect so you get to see that so it's interesting to see them go through these feelings and emotions and deal with life when they never had to deal with it especially being um a human being that knows how to experience life and seeing the first two human beings experience it for the first time without any help um was interesting and there was a scene where um eve was just doing her thing and she saw uh, a man and she realized that it was Adonai and um that's kind of like a reminder that even when you're exiled or even when you're dealing with whatever consequences when God is uh I don't want to say punishing you but you're being reprimanded or um he's disciplining you for your wrong he is still watching over you he is still protecting you he is still caring for you and I thought that was phenomenal um there was a scene that kind of made me sad though um when she was referring to her son when she said um I had put my hope and expectations upon this child, Cayenne, when she was pregnant because, you know, God had said that this, there would be the seed from her that would step on the, uh, head, the bruise ahead of the serpent, something like that. I can't remember, remember the verse, but, um, she put so much of her hope in the object, the being, and not in the provider. So, um, this book is really good. It's really, really good. So I'm going to read some more, um. And I did put little pink tabs for like the next section, so there are two more sections in here. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying. So I'm gonna keep reading because my son is here now, so I'm gonna read. You'll probably see a montage of me reading. I'll come with my thoughts, and then we'll move on to day three. <laughs>
Hey guys, so I just got to page 238, 248, sorry, 248, um, so I'm just, I got that last part for tomorrow, and oh my gosh, so this part is really focusing on the sort of incest side of Genesis, um, because we know in the beginning of the, the word it says that there were Adam and Eve, and then they had Cain and Abel, and of course they had their children, but I know for me as a teen, I always wondered like were there other people and if there weren't other people did they really you know have sex with each other like the children of adam and eve and in this book they are um they're definitely pretty much banging one another um <laughs> which to me it still sounds like crazy because i'm not into that i don't agree with that but again this is in the bible this was what happened back then um even before you know god made those ten commandments all those main ten commandments people were having incestual sex so um just reading these few chapters i was just like wait a minute she with her and he and him and the siblings and the brothers and, mm. and then i like the kind of spin she gave with cain um or cayenne in the instance of the story um where cayenne and adam have this sort of rift between them because Cain actually has fallen for his mother um and Adam has fallen for one of his daughters which in my mind is a no-go but when I read biblical fiction I have to make sure that I understand that this is not in today's society this was written in a time where there really weren't any rules and because this is Genesis the beginning of humanity in a sense I have to keep that in mind so me in my flesh i'm like ill disgusting no 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 but again in that time in that era it was normal for people to do that unfortunately or sadly i would say but um yeah there's a lot of babies being born um from eve of course uh she's only mating having sex with um, adam adam is only having sex with her they're having children non-stop but their children are now like their children are siblings but also having sex with each other so the only husband and wife is adam and eve but their children are co-mingling <laughs> it, it's weird um it's written well i like the way it's written again you have to read it to really get a full understanding because me saying it it sounds like mm, what but in reading it it helps to really answer some of those questions that i know i had as a teen like are they you know because i know the bible says to multiply whatever that's what god told adam and eve was to multiply but like on them multiplying was it meant for their children to multiply with each other as well like and if they weren't supposed to multiply with each other were they supposed to go out to seek other humans were there other hu like i don't even as an adult, I still have questions about the Bible. I know what the Bible says, but I still question it because my mind. But um, I'm loving the right. Like, the writing for this is impeccable. Like, if I could just write this on the writing alone, five stars. Honestly, five stars alone on the writing. Um, I like her descriptions. Very descriptive. And just witnessing these two humans who have children now have to really deal with this. Like, you could see the effects of now being able to die being able to get sick um like one of their sons um i think it was lahat that she named in the bible one of their sons basically loses his eye from being burned which they never had to deal with that before um one of their grandchildren almost dies from eating a red berry we don't know what this red berry is but she almost dies um and it's kind of like they never had to deal with this before but now they have to be mindful of like of of touching heat like there was a scene in the previous chapter where um they found an animal and she was like well can't the animal limbs just knit itself back together and adam is like no not anymore and it's just like they never had to deal with pain they never had to deal with um things dying um getting sick like there's a scene when she first begins to vomit for the first time and adam is like why did you do that and she's like i don't know she's freaking out but like they never had to you know past their bowels or anything like they never had to do with that so watching it happen is so like mind-blowing because i know they, these are questions that i ask a lot as a teenager and even as an adult sometimes i'm wondering like mm, well how did they learn this and how did they learn that and you know was it told to them did god reveal it to them did, was it like a process and in this you're seeing the process um but we 
end on chapter what was that chapter 23 we end where they're having the sacrifice um uh they have the sacrifice or whatever and all the children have basically brought fruits and grain and stuff like that including Cain, who is Cain, and um Hevel who is Abel in the story he brings um a lamb that Adam therefore sacrifices um and the only thing to get burnt up by God um was the lamb so Cain is upset and he decides to therefore go to okay so basically picture the altar you have a stack of fruits and grain and stuff here and then a lamb here and the altar goes up in flame but the only thing that's really burning is the lamb whereas everything else is not now mind you in Cain's mind he is the chosen one to bruise the serpent's head however we know God works in mysterious ways and just because God says um you know your child would be the one you don't know how many children you're gonna have one and you don't know which child it's going to be so the problem therefore now is that Eve always sorry guys mommy duty but um as I was saying um you don't so basically you're gonna have all these children you don't know which children it is which son it is gonna be but Eve's issue was that she put all of this hope in the firstborn son you don't know what God wanted like which son god wanted because all he said was that he was going to bless you with children he told you to multiply you multiplied you had several sons several daughters but god never specified which child it's a difference if god would have said your firstborn son will be the one to bruise the head of the serpent all he said was that your child was going to bruise the head of the serpent and obviously at this time sons were like the most important thing to carry on the family line but she put so much of her hope into um Kyan, which then Kyan taking all that hope in he decided or not decided but he sort of like took in all her affections and fell in love with her and there was a part where she had to tell her son like no this is wrong i am not your sibling i am your mother and that is my husband his father um which <laughs> i feel bad for because i was like oh poor Kyan, he's like getting his heart broken back and forth but at the same time i'm just like it's disgusting because that's your mama like that that's your mama and her other daughter um Renana, I think that's how you say her name, Renana. She's just real. Mm. She, she, she's acting like a thought is what I'm gonna say, a thought, um, concerning her father, and it's like Adam isn't correcting it. He is flowing with it, like he's making things for her, giving little sweet, like mm, mm, it's bothering me. But again, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Honestly, it, like I said, this, like I said on day one, this might be a solid five star i am loving this um definitely a lot more than judas or excuse me iscariot was the first book loving this a lot more than iscariot and um her writing makes me really definitely want to go and explore her other genres her, her thrillers her fantasies and stuff like that because i'm mind blown but that is it for day two i will see you guys tomorrow for day three
right, so you guys saw the little clips of me washing dishes, making my latte, um, doing a little bit of reading and things like that. But yeah, my son just finished having breakfast. Um, say good morning, Chris. Good morning. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I read two books this morning. I did do Unseen by Priscilla Shire. It's her 365 day devotional based on her Prince Warrior series, which I believe is a middle grade series. So this is more of like a middle grade young adult type of Debo. It's okay, not a lot of highlighting, but um, it's gorgeous those days. Then I finally picked up Resuscitating Evangelism by Jordan and Ernest Easley. It's a father-son duo, and oh my god, chapter one was phenomenal. You guys can see the tab. Sorry if you guys hear that. My son is watching um, something on his Switch, but um, I have tabs. I'm not sure if it's going to show you. They're green tabs, but... The stuff in this book is just amazing, and it's not just about you being an evangelist, um, but it's more so about evangelism as a whole, personal evangelism that you do, as well as church evangelism that you do, and um, chapter one has been amazing, so yes. So now, I'm going to knock out the last bit of pava, so sad, but um, I am going to show you guys how I annotate up close, because um, I know I did an annotating video, hopefully if all goes well. The annotating video goes up before this vlog. If not, then it'll be up after this vlog. So if it's up before, click the I. And if it's not, yeah. But um, I'm going to show you guys exactly how I annotate when I get to specific lines and how I pick certain lines in a book to mean specific things. So that is what's going to happen. It is currently 1039. So I'm thinking this last portion should take me about an hour and a half maybe i'm gonna say maybe two hours because i'm literally gonna try to sit here and just read straight through it um because I'm, I'm loving it so far so i am on chapter 24 right now which is page 249 and i need to get to page um 354 so not about 100 and some odd pages up to go so we're going to tackle that and you guys will see me annotating and I'll flip the camera around and walk you guys through it as I'm reading. But yeah, let's just get to it. Okay guys, so I'm at a page that I'm going to annotate um, or underline and um, it's going to be in this section here. So it's going to be this portion where it says, brother, I do not know the burden you carry, but I know I'm sicking that you might not have needed to carry it for the one has taken my sacrifice and now you have suffered all these years so i'm going to mark it with orange and blue which um marking it with blue because it's sad if you guys can see my annotating blue is anything that makes me sad or angry um and then orange is for anything plot so i'm going to underline it in blue and i'm using this paper make flare ink and then i'm going to bracket it in orange and I'll be back. Okay, so here it is finished um, with the brackets, the underline, and the tab. Um, it's more so blue because it's very sad. Um, it makes me sad because it's like I mentioned earlier in another clip where Eve put so much of her hope into her firstborn, not really knowing if it would be her firstborn. It could have been her third, her fifth, whatever. Um, so she put all this pressure on him um, to be the chosen one when he wasn't the chosen one. Um, and then I marked it as orange for plot because this is kind of like the turning point that caused him to, in essence, kill his brother within the story. So um, sometimes it's literally just one color, kind of like how I did this page here. It's just in navy blue for foreshadowing. But in this instance, it's two colors because it's sad, but it's also important to the plot. So that's why I bracketed it in orange. So um, I'll show you guys the next annotating I do okay back to um back to annotating so there is a portion here where they are talking about the mark of abel or i mean the mark of cain the mark that cain got um for killing abel if you know what i'm talking about but in this sense instance it's cayenne and hevel um and basically the mark has this type of i guess power in which when you stare at it you see the worst thing that you've done i guess in a sense so i'm going to mark this section with orange um so yeah okay um then there is a next another section here um down here where adam says you must take with you you provisions food and tools i'm going to actually mark that um with pink and blue because it's a little bit sad, um, but I'm going to mark it with pink because pink is anything doing with relationships or romance. And for me, 
this lets me know that even though Adam is so pissed off and angry and hurt and dealing with the pain of losing Hevel, and even though he's always had this sort of ongoing um, issue with Kyan, he's still a father at the end of the day of Kyan, and he's loving on him despite what happened. So that's why I'm marking it in blue and pink. Okay, so here it is. I put the quote in pink and then the second portion in blue and put a pink tab because I want this to be more of a relational thing because it's letting me know that no matter what you do, your parents will continuously and always love you, um, even if you apparently kill someone. But uh, yeah, so moving on to the next one. Okay, so back again. <laughs> and um, I'm going to mark this part with blue and orange again. More so orange than blue. So I am going to um show you guys in a second okay so here it is um blue and orange and i put tabs for both because this is definitely essential to the plot because um this is now where uh Ren Ren renana the one that i was annoyed with decides she's going to leave with cayenne instead of her sister um lila who lila was in love with cayenne but of course they're also siblings so she's mourning the loss of her brother and her love and um, in her stead, Renana said, you know what, I'll go with you and I'll be the one to bear her children in her stead. So I thought it was beautiful to the story, um, but also sad. So yes, I hope that was helpful with how I annotate. So I'm going to get back to reading and come back to you guys. Okay, guys, so you should have seen a few clips of how I annotate and when I annotate and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I finally got to the next portion, which is called Generations, which I believe is the third or fourth. The first one was the garden, then you had the exile, then you had Kayan. So this is the fourth section of the story now, Generations. Um, and this basically takes place after Kayan has left. So we get to see the killing. Well, we don't see the, the killing of Hevel. But Kayan basically divulges what happened to his mom. Um, we get that part in scripture where God is speaking to um, Cain and the story. Um, you get to see the... The deep bonds and love of a father and a, and a son, despite all of the differences they, they might have. Um, but again, the writing is impeccable. Impeccable. I'm still sitting at a five star right now. Definitely a five star read for me. Um, and I'm going to talk about my ratings system in a different video because I know a lot of people um, are interested in how I like how I rate books. Um, and sometimes I'm critical with my ratings. Um, sometimes I'm not critical with my ratings being both critical and non-critical with this it still would be a five star read for me because um the way she has written this story is beautifully done so i'm going to finish up reading when i get to the last portion um which is called adam i am going to come back with my thoughts and then i'm going to have a montage of me finishing up this book it is currently 11 16 so like i said i wanted to finish this within two hours i think i started at like 10 something so about 12 30 ish i want to be done so i have like an hour and a half out no an hour and maybe 10 minutes to read so we're going to accomplish that and um i'll be done with this book so yeah we're gonna we're gonna finish reading Okay, guys, so I know I said I wasn't going to come until I got to the portion of Adam, but holy cow, um, Adam and Eve are legit going at it right now. Like, they're going tit for tat. Um, I mean, whew, this is like seeing the first lick of domestic abuse take place. Like, they're verbally abusing one another, and then Adam hits her for the first time. But then, sorry if you guys hear my son, he is on the floor drawing. Christian. Be quiet for a second, okay? okay? Thank you. Um, but like he he straights up like it says he struck me then so fast and so unexpectedly that I stumbled back. I was stunned. Oh no, she said I was not stunned. I had known that if I spoke my mind, I would incur his wrath, held ever more in check. Like, bruh. Okay. And then, you know, she's like, um, you would hit the hand of, you would strike the image of God, meaning that he hit her, so therefore he's technically hitting God, he goes, I was made in the image of God, she says, as was I, he says, no, you were made in my image for me, bruh, like, chill, um, and I mean, like, they're going at it, then he has the audacity to say, um, was Kyan even his, uh, are you certain that he was fathered by me, aren't you the only man in the garden, um, wasn't you the only man she was with the whole time, 24-7? Um, are we playing these games? Like, are we, play we playing these games, Adam? And then he goes, was he not the serpents that you consumed 
I'm sorry. Was he not the serpents that you commune so well and secretly with? A serpent indeed, this child of yours, and how much he has shown it, it that he should kill the brother of my image. How appropriate, Hava. I'm just like... So she... <laughs> so I'm just like Adam like so you trying to say she she did the dude with a serpent though like that's how we doing it Adam like really Adam like you not only hit her but then you trying to say that Kyan is now natural son but you've always hated your son because that's how you had your relationship with him like I don't know I don't know I don't I don't know how I'm feeling you guys but I'm enjoying the story like I said it's interesting to see the first family have to go through these things for the first time even though we're currently living in a society where this stuff is normal to us but mind blown but i'm gonna come back because my son is having a ball on the floor he's making noise so i'm gonna come back okay guys so it is 11 54 so it's almost 12 o'clock and i said about 12 30 and i only have how many chapters left two chapters left to go yeah 32 and 33 which are not a lot of pages 337 350 so it's 20 odd pages left to go so i'm gonna record myself of course reading but um in the portion with the generations you basically get to see all of their children having children and apparently eve was having kids up until 601 like i don't know how true that is i don't really know but um in the book she had children all the way up until she was 601 years old um more of her children died <laughs> more of her great grands and her grandchildren died um there's just death um but um there was a scene where they did get to to go to see go to Kyan's land because Kyan's son came to them and then they in turn went to him for a year but Kyan wasn't there they did get to see Renana um which was cool but the thing that was interesting was that um the land or the settlement that Kyan has created they oh sorry I say that uh, but the, the land that they created. To turn it back on, slide the switch on the back of Google Home. Um, the land that Kyan had created, they don't really worship God. Um, they actually have idols and other gods that they worship. And um, when Kyan decided to come back to Adam's settlement, um, when they did the sacrifice, he did not partake in it. They were there, but they, him and his people chose not to partake in it, which I understand after what happened with Hevel and um, Hevel's offering being taken in by God. But um, it's interesting to see the dynamics of the children. And Lila decided to leave with Kyan when he did go back home. So it's interesting altogether she did give birth to um seth who in this book is called uh what is his name shet i think his name was shim was it shim or seth whatever the the name of that son it'd be on the screen but um in this book they call him shet so yeah now we're at the part where adam is getting ready to die so um yeah I literally have 20 pages left, so we are going to read these last 20 pages, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts, and then we're going to end this reading vlog. Okay, guys, so I finished. Um, ooh, I enjoyed this so much. I'm going to have to put this into the call pal system to figure out my rating. Because I really want to give it a five-star rating. But I think for this book, I'm going to have to use that system. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I could be I to go to that video. It's basically a rating system um, that a young lady had created to help her figure out what her rating for certain books would be. I don't use that rating unless it's a book that I am having difficulty really rating. Um, so I've used that system for maybe about five or six books so far. Um, but I'm probably going to use that system right now because this book was so good. And I want to give it a five. But then a part of me is like maybe it's a 4.5 or 4.75. I don't... <laughs> Just know that I love this book. This book was beautifully written. Again, lyrical and poetic. I love the, the I don't want to say the exploration, the journey of watching Adam and Eve, the first two humans, um, experience life after being exiled. Um, I enjoyed their growth. I enjoyed their 
just watching them be human um because so often we don't see people in the bible be human we hear these tales of them being great men and women which we know they're great men and women but it's kind of like with david everyone knows david as being you know the king of kings of um the man after god's own heart but he was also a very flawed man who did very bad things he raped Bathsheba. but his first son was killed because of him um i mean he did well not his first son but his first son with Bathsheba was killed because of him um he killed uriah uh, uriah 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 i think that was his name uriah um like he did so many foolish things but he was still a man after god's own heart because he always went back to repent and watching watching biblical people become human for me is like mind-blowing and i've always had questions about like the first family like you know especially like if it's just them two on the earth then how did the other people come about um were they were they, were they doing to do with each other and like in this book you're seeing the brothers and sisters are having kids with one another like they're they're intermingling um but it's not distasteful at all it is beautifully written it is tastefully done it is just phenomenal it definitely helps to explain scripture a little bit more for me you can tell that um tasca really did some research and she studied the word for herself and that she uh wanted people to get an understanding but also wanted to give you that entertainment of it being a fictional story well done but well done i'm just i'm ecstatic um again i'm going to actually literally go put this in the call file system on my computer figure out my rating it might be a solid five but it could also be a 4.5 or 4.75 depending so i'm gonna go put that in the call file system real quick and then tell you guys my rating and then um in this vlog okay guys so i just i just did it you guys can see the excel behind me but um call pal for those who don't know is basically um a seven tier rating system where you're rating the characters the atmosphere the writing the plot um the intrigue the logic and your enjoyment of the story so you're doing it um from one through ten putting in numbers and then whatever your uh once you add all seven categories you divide it by seven and then that number is then correlated to a star rating system so um for characters i gave it a nine i was really um enjoying the characters but i wasn't invested in all of the characters which is why i gave it a nine because there were a few i just didn't care for um atmosphere and writing both got 10 because i felt like i was there in the garden i felt like i was there experiencing these things with them and the writing was impeccable i've been talking about the writing from day one um for plot i gave it a nine for intrigue i gave it a nine and for logic i gave it a nine um only reason why logic got a nine is because you know i really don't understand the mind of god so logic for me was a nine sorry if you guys hear my brother's drumming i can't do anything about that right now and i just want to end this vlog but um enjoyment got a 10 because i thoroughly enjoyed so adding all of that up i got a 66 divided by seven it's rounded up to 9.43 which is a five star rating so this is a solid five star for me i thoroughly enjoyed it and i cannot wait to start the legend of sheba tomorrow so that reading vlog will literally be coming right after this but i'm gonna end this vlog um because my brother's playing the drums and i don't feel like asking him to stop so i'll see you guys in the next video if you have any comments questions or concerns just let me know down below and um thank you guys for rating comment and subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye